The latest in our series on the dark side of cosmetic surgery and how a lack of aftercare can have a terrible and lasting impact. ITV News heard from two patients who travelled to Turkey for weight loss procedures and are still living with the consequences. One had to call 999 after her nervous system shut down. Another needed a second operation to fix the first. They told Geraint Vincent about their experiences and why post-operative care is vitally important. And a warning that Geraint's report contains images of patients' injuries you may find upsetting. Courtney Rowley has had to learn to live with the consequences of her decision to have surgery to help her lose weight. Doctors in this country recommended the procedure, but because of the waiting times on the NHS, she travelled to Turkey to have it. Instead of recovering from the operation when she got home, she felt worse with every day that okay. passed, until one morning she woke up and knew she had to call 999. It felt like pins and needles, but intense all the way from my toes up towards my chest, and my legs were like jelly. I couldn't bear any weight on them at all and I couldn't even try and sit up straight without feeling incredibly dizzy and sick. What Courtney was experiencing was the shutting down of her nervous system and the start of a process which would see her muscles wasted. The gastric band surgery had vastly reduced the size of her stomach and her body wasn't getting the nutrients it needed. I'd been in hospital I think two or three days and that's when my hand seized up and there were like claws and I couldn't open my hands. So that's when I became more scared in myself because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't use my phone to call my parents or my family. I couldn't pick up my own drink. I couldn't feed myself. It was awful. When Courtney was a teenager, she developed cysts on her ovaries, which led to a hormone imbalance which caused her to gain a lot of weight. The operation she had in Turkey was successful, but what was missing was any plan for aftercare, for vitamin injections or the blood tests, which would have revealed that there was something badly wrong. They tell you about infections. Infections are easy to spot. You know, you've got, you've got a wound that might smell. You know it's an infection. You've got oozing and pus. That, that's obviously a, an indication. But the neurological damage caused and the neuropathy caused. We couldn't see that. Until it was really till too it was, late. Till it was too late. Going to countries like Turkey can seem like an attractive option for people like Courtney. Clinics have slick websites and social media endorsements. And the cost of the surgery can be a fraction of what it would be to have it done privately in the UK. But however well it is performed, an operation overseas can mean you miss out on a critical part of the process. Why is aftercare so important? It's, it's the means to ensure that healing is going according to plan, to give the patient advice as needed if something unexpected arises, and if there is a complication happening, because all surgery can have complications, that you catch it early so you have a chance to treat it quickly. It's always been an issue to some extent when you travel overseas and have a problem back home, there's always the issue of who looks after it. But over the last five years, the numbers have definitely increased. It's now at the level where almost every colleague I know in the UK in plastic surgery, also in breast surgery, has, has treated at least one, if not a series of patients who've returned from surgery overseas with complications. When I woke up, I felt in distress straight away. I was in severe pain. I was only crying. I was asking what's happening. My stomach felt like it was crushed rocks in my stomach and it was very difficult for me to move. Christian Richards travelled to Turkey three years ago for surgery to remove fat from his stomach and chest. After he got back home, he was still in a lot of pain. His wounds were starting to get infected, so he got back in touch with the clinic. It was more like life and death, really, because I trusted them, and they were the only people I needed to go to. They were very gaslighting me a lot. They were saying things would be OK, this is normal, you need to do this. I was doing everything they told me to, and I was explaining to them that the issues were caused because of the surgery, but they just say, it's normal for this to happen. And I felt like I couldn't turn to no one. I had no help. Christian eventually found another surgeon in Turkey who repaired the damage done to his body. I suffered a lot, you know, 
financially, uh, mentally, physically, flights, hotel, numerous surgeries I had, I uh, probably close to 20 grand. They sold me a dream. And uh, when, when it came to it, it weren't nothing like that. There was problems after problems. There was no support. There was, n there was just see you later. That was it. But my consultants have said, you know, that I shouldn't blame myself, but I do, because I feel like if I'd not had the surgery done, yeah, well, I'd still be a bigger girl and maybe I'd have bigger health issues in the future due to my weight and things. But, you know, I wouldn't be in this position that I'm in now. The solutions offered by operations abroad can seem simple and straightforward, but invasive surgery of whatever kind always comes with risks. And if they're not managed properly, life can become so much more difficult than it ever was before. Geraint Vincent, ITV News.